Hello, hello, this is Martin Q from the Strategic Retreat, and this is a little look at Bulwark Falconeer Chronicles. Uh, sadly, I missed out on the Steam Next Fest event, but I did play this for about three hours, uh, and unfortunately bungled my recording. I left the Steam page up, and so the only thing, <laughs> the only thing from that VOD was my commentary in the audio and a little strip of gameplay on the top and bottom. So this is not my first reaction to this game, uh, but I'll try to recall most of what I felt. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is a bit of a reversal of what I usually do, which is a live stream on Twitch, interaction with the community and commentary there, then uploading the VOD to YouTube. So this time it's going to be reversed where I make a curated video solo here and this will just go be going to youtube and then to twitch so yeah just a little bit of a dive into non-interactive media i'll still have comments and whatnot but you know what i mean it's not quite the same as uh, doing it live so this really caught my eye when i was scrolling through the next fest previews uh, there's a little gif showing the rising of a city, clicks, symbols, and stuff. I think it was basically something like this, where I saw, whoa, the you know, whatever thematics, medieval fantasy from the castle, uh, I was assuming, but it, it was just gorgeous. Uh, the words to describe it would probably be best suited. It's like, yeah, watching a painting come to life. Uh, I joked around about it being like a screensaver that you could control uh, in the most positive version of that uh, in that it's uh, you were just watching this procedural generation how everything connects and links up together uh, kind of like an advanced version of Legos and whatnot are also like all of the model train sets where you're just looking at this miniature world and watching the train chug along and whatever I never built those tables mo top models but I got I sort of got the appeal of that and this is about as close as I've ever gotten to directly being like that where you just have fun whether you're in the sort of mini campaign or the free build mode of the demo that you could just look at a at this landscape and think like yeah i think a city would go right there or it's going to look really cool once i link a bunch of passageways together for the resources over here or um, have a a massive tower in the center of this place and then bastions spreading from the center like a spider web of fortifications. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, my words aren't describing it properly, but that's what the gameplay is for. So this is based on Fal the Falconeer Chronicles. I don't didn't know about this dev beforehand, so when I was doing a little bit of research, just saw, oh, this is based on an existing property of his, and it's a it's a third-person dogfighter game, and I don't do a lot of flight sims. I don't do a lot of these kinds of games, but I, again, get the appeal. Uh, it's just that I, when I jumped into this demo, it's without that context, so there's little bits of story, politics, and how it works that you wouldn't get without playing this, so that's always there if you want to support them and do that. Um, but as for me, this is just my assumptions of, oh, medieval fantasy and... Uh, when you're playing, they introduce some of the factions. Like, these people seek peace. These people love technology, but they have to hold it for themselves. It's, uh, you know, that's what you do with factions. Uh, there's cool dragon riders. It's uh, There's all sorts of theming, aesthetics that you'll probably get into more with story and whatever eventual full campaign there is. So and that's all the extra context before, yeah, I dove into a little bit with the demo. Okay, this time I'm not going to forget. <laughs> there we go. Oh, so right, and now so it is, it's live without being live. Um, part of the whole debacle with the screen capping is that uh, I wasn't able to look at OBS because this game does not seem to have windowed mode 
and as somebody who doesn't do a lot of programming, game development at all, uh, I'm not going to say, oh, it's super easy, but still, it's it, it was a notable feature missing that I'm usually able to work with when I'm doing these recordings, um, just so I can yeah, keep an eye on more parts of my desktop. I don't have a fancy multi-computer, multi-display setup. I clearly don't do this for a living. Um, but yeah, so that was a notable thing, uh, and I'm sure with figuring out everything else about the game, um, that's that might be on some sort of a roadmap. So yep, yeah, an evolving demo. Apparent. It sounds like they're gonna the guy's gonna keep this demo up and make gradual changes over and over. Welcome or to as he progresses. A game about chaotic creativity. No conventional controls. One button to paint the landscape, another to move about. And while you paint towers and walls, people will start to make the world come alive. Keep building, that's the trick. This can be confusing at first, overwhelming even, but don't worry, there's also no mistakes. So yeah, I gotta love that little personal touch. It's not just a tooltip. Uh, I think that a lot of developers don't mess with a uh, more direct involvement in something like communicating to the player. And it's understandable. I think we've seen enough of those gaming award shows where things get incredibly awkward and it's all the stereotypes about engineers, programmers, and whatnot being introverted. It's just, yeah, they're, they're used to their art form and not about selling it or, uh, I guess in game terms, it's about how many points they put into charisma or something. But I think it's cool that he voices that a little better than a text box that says, try things. So yeah, this is what I was saying. It, I don't delve too deep into settings and all that, but notably, there's no windowed option uh, around where they usually keep it with the resolution or anywhere else here. I don't think there's arrow keys or a next page or uh, that I, for any for me to miss. I'm hoping that I'm not doing a stupid Let's Player thing, right, where you lose a bunch of IQ points and everybody says you're blind and all that. So that's uh, that's just part of the process but yeah it does seem like there is no windowed mode um, but in any case now if uh, now that I saw that it's recording in OBS uh, yeah so since it's been a few days since I played this mm. handing camera controls okay um, let's see I think that I might just do free build I I think that the the story it, I didn't progress very far. I, I just kind of becomes an open world builder until again the final product is out and you are fully, uh, to fully exploring the world and progressing. But this is the free build mode. Here you can build without resources. There is no open world content as well. It's just about enjoying the build and exploring what's possible. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the campaign gives you some extra little context and immersion with you being a leader and setting up your town and all that. And I might still do that just to show off some of the combat or, uh, yeah, later. But essentially, essentially you're you know, just doing a, playing a builder drone, overseeing all this, and then you just kind of, yeah, plop things down. swapping controls around so yeah going through all of the different resource availabilities going uh you're i think the tiers are like wood stone and then iron <laughs> and yeah you're just going off of the context around your mouse pointer so yeah you start with a lot of these building centers and then you just, it seems like it adjusts again for all the procedural generation and you've got like three tiles around your city and you just start placing, uh, well, telling it where it can start placing things and it just molds its way around what's possible. I think if you look closely, it clips into itself, but for the most part, it's these graphics are so simple and 
you're at such a large scale that it doesn't really matter. It just kind of blurs. If you want to, you're looking at the big picture here. And yeah, all those things that were previously like a separate structure just kind of becomes like a pillar. Uh, you know, the doors, the windows, it all just, it ends up just working, right? What if Todd Howard actually could follow through? Because that's not really the point. You're not, you know, playing first person view of a citizen walking around there. Well, maybe that's something you'll do later, but that's not the main draw of the game. And uh, yeah, it just cleanly makes a bunch of platforms populates it with housing, I think, over time before it applies things like your resources, in this case, like manpower. But yeah, you can just keep on clicking until it stops applying new things. You just look out for the telltale signs of construction where it phases in. And yeah, once something stops adding new parts, you just kind of move to a different, different depth. Now from three to two, and it just makes, it's a fantastic citadel simulator, right? Where I say citadel, but like a ziggurat or a pyramid or something, you're, it's just a satisfaction of building a wide base that you build up and then up and then up. And it tends to, uh, it tends to thin out as you get to the top as a, as a support. Uh, usually you don't get the opposite where yeah it starts thin at the bottom and then it widens as you get to the top so you're just asking for things to tip over but I mean there's towers that are like that in this game so yeah you would just be managing managing these resources just by availability I think so I, th I think it's just going by availability and not you need this specific number uh, as of now so yeah it's just this gorgeous citadel and you can start trying to connect it to things. In this case, this is actually kind of a bad spot because there's no resources, but it thematically looks really cool. So yep, you place these towers, kind of like logistics points. And in this case, yeah, for free build, you're doing this for rule of cool. And I want to do what I did before where it Get as high up as possible. Oh, okay. I needed to, yeah, maneuver the 3D space. There. That's about as high up as you get. So, yeah, there are little parts where the procedural generation starts to fall apart a little bit. It's, under again, understandable that uh, you can't really account for every place anything might be, uh, the player might choose to build. But you can see where the foundation extends into the earth. But if you build over something like a cliff face or a thin strip of land, then it becomes this sort of weird pipe that heads toward the ground. And then it becomes very unstable looking. Uh, OSHA would be having a field day on how sturdy this is. It's just waiting to fall apart. Uh, so yeah, then you just have the little hotkeys going up and down each floor for your little context menu. So in this case, yeah, you want to build out from the base. I think before I was able to start constructing a side, and then it allows you to build out a little bit from that. You might be, I think you could build off of foundations uh, to build more foundations, to build more foundations and balconies to more foundations, etc. Where you can see it starts like extending into the ocean. <laughs> but even then, it's still you know, satisfying to watch it work. But I, yeah, I don't think I'm able to do that now. Uh, but yeah, you're able to make some pretty haphazard castles. It's gorgeous. I mean, look, the, the scaffolding, the walkways, the stairs. It, it really is just a city builder rule of cool where, yeah, it connects, it works within the mechanics of the game, and that's all. You don't have to worry uh, about how hyper-realistic it is. Right, like playing 
a D and D campaign. It's like, well, I wanted a castle on a cliffside, and we're not going to worry about how else it works. It's like just magic. starting to build out. Yeah, you're seeing previously that segment I wasn't able to get this circular ring. But when you see the triangle, it projects out this sort of balcony. Which is another part of the semicircle. So then you, you do end up creating a foundation where there was none. See if I can build it up a bit more. Ah. Well, you basically get the idea. And so, yeah, just from one little experimentation here, you've got something that's already just this gorgeous thing where you can set up the camera, the camera, photo mode, and yeah. Like I said, it is. It's like a painting, it's like a gorgeous screensaver, you can just capture a moment. So, yeah, then you take control of your surveyor again, and uh, when I first played the free build, I didn't know what I was looking for, because it starts you off on this gorgeous cliffside, but no, you are actually supposed to look for these resource nodes. In this case, it's this kind of sort of wood coral thing. And you just set up these little gatherers, start connecting them with walkways. And in the campaign, they tell you that this is like a... They The walkways are where they create citizen housing and production, which, uh, which is what makes the number go up. So yeah, you get this kind of crisscross spider web mess. But it is actually increasing production. Yep, you can see the numbers start to go up as they finish adding the buildings and whatnot. You would just need to connect it all the way back. Uh, so then, if you see here, this ah, little like slur floodlights. So let's see. And once you build things up, and you're selecting a higher floor, you also get this other aesthetic choice. Where oh yeah, you can elevate those walkways. So it kind of transformed it into more of a what's the word? Dang it, I'm brain farting, but well, not a suspend. You can get things like suspension bridges, uh, in this case, a drawbridge for any of the naval trade routes that you have. So then, yeah, just have that connection and you can build all the way back if you choose or build a harbor, more likely if you're that far away on an island. You know, you were worried about resources. Uh, wonder. Okay. Oh, I think I got it. Yep. All right. Uh, off stream, I was able to, I wanted to, I put it on uh, the very tippy top of this point and it created this gorgeous twin gate sort of look. But uh, yeah, so here created a supply line between these two towers. It doesn't look like it, but it, no, it goes along the bottom there. Yeah, another drawbridge. <laughs> um, it's like those, uh, it's like those G National Geographic pictures of some you know, deep, deeply hidden tribe in the jungle, and they have to like cross a raging river on a rope bridge or something by shimmying across. It's just, it's like that. But, but in uh, in this game, so yeah, uh, I just connected that 
so that the citadel now has now has resources or the wood resource and i could then uh, i believe oh no it is no it is already a citadel i mean i'm being an idiot um but yeah so that's just an example of connecting everything and you eventually can just step back and admire your handiwork it's all this atmospheric fog that also helps with game performance i imagine um because there's a lot of things you see the demo limit of 50. Uh, it's not 50 buildings though yeah it's a certain amount of detail on each of them i suppose but yeah you can turn off the logistics and then you get these yeah just these gorgeous shots if you want <laughs> so yeah that's just some basic building uh there's the world map and this is where yeah the open world nature of the game you'd be uh, basically exploring points of interest just interesting landscapes out of this giant sea and i'm sure all of these have different set pieces gorgeous cliff sides and um, places where you just think ah that needs a tower or a town um, but when i was playing i obviously didn't spend hours and hours scouring each island um you're probably gonna have your eye drawn to this circle which is it looks like some sort of magical altar with these kind of winged statues creating a barrier i suppose i could try flying over there just to illustrate it but uh, but yeah it doesn't seem to mechanically do anything but it's a place where you can plop an outpost down and it looks cool might do more in the actual story uh, otherwise yeah it's mostly islands the maw is just this cool divot in the earth the water just falls right off the edge i think when i first saw it i was joking around about the earth being flat or something and yep see the edge is right there and it meets another flat plate of the earth and the water just falls off see yep on the right path so yeah on the world map it shows you with a golden arrow which way the surveyors uh, pointed but it can be a little disorienting with how fast it spins around so yeah here it is it seems to be the biggest point of interest on the map so far other than the maw uh, and it's just this gorgeous th uh, barrier straight out of atlantis the lost empire or something just barriers magic keeping water back and allowing you to sort of build on this sea floor it's not you know the depths of the ocean but you know it's just a uh, the cool thematics and yeah when i tried it you just kind of build it up a little bit and then you can get these foundations but it's not building it it doesn't build it all it doesn't always build exactly where you think it will but it's still following that rule of cool so obviously this is a a photo op <laughs> uh of cool atlantis you want to build just build it on top and on top and on top up and up Mm -hmm. but yeah and so that's that's the gist of it where you can then uh yeah you do more with that uh there's a little teleport if you need to um and this is where right there's also this the combat section which might showcase i don't know how quickly i'll speed through the campaign but uh, you get to hire or recruit a bunch of different commanders and they again they hail from the different factions and they all have their own little theme unique sort of building it's like a rookery and it sends out a bunch of yeah eagle riders to follow your surveyor 
and they would just kind of help fend off attackers. Were there any in the free build mode? But yeah, it's just gorgeous. You just you get this retinue of dragons, airships, eagles. You get uh, oh right, I forgot. There's the sea trading routes, but you get captains as well. All these different traders. Some of them carry. Captains are now available. Some of them carry specific resources, so you can mix and match them with the ones you have to three per route. Then you'll also have several defenders, I suppose. They patrol in giant battleships. Looks gorgeous. Uh, let me see. I just make another one. It'll might send him out. There he goes. So yeah, get these dreadnoughts and the enemies will shoot at you. But yeah, you just get this really gorgeous aesthetic. All right. So now let me try that quick little uh, this campaign, campaign demo. Mode. Here you get a taste of the open world building sandbox. It has a basic tutorial, a resource system based only on distance rather than how much you can produce, and an ever expanding set of encounters, world events, and unlockables. Yep, so for demo purposes, yeah, distance, not amount. Um, and advice, click and build everywhere. There are no mistakes, and slowly figuring out what builds where and how things grow is part of the game. It's about experimenting, so don't be afraid and just go wild. Right. So, yeah, it kind of walks you through it, and that's probably why I shouldn't have gone through pre build mode. But we've already not to be too rude. While you're on the ground. But yeah, uh, all the controls. Outpost of the wood mill. <laughs> Notice how workers are already building houses. Right. I kind of just want to get to the part portion where your you're dealing way. with other factions, but transports wood across walkways. Let us build a basic wooden tower with a walkway towards it. Wood can only travel a limited number of walkways. <laughs> away from but this but it's fine. Encouraging workers to build along walkways connected to the wood. Select your outpost so we can start expanding it further. Right. Outposts can be upgraded. There is, there is, there is no iron available for this upgrade. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's what I get for being in a in a rush. We can add foundations to basic towers and outposts. These allow workers to build a higher class of housing on them, increasing the work. So this is a odd part of the tutorial. Of our outpost can be improved further by connecting more towers and walkways to it. Because this is such a thin strip that you're not even able to build out to the normal three squares of foundations around your city. Uh, so you, yeah, it it's a manner of it is time we started being more finding hyper specific spots to the skies and seek out iron ore. you can eventually build up something decent here but uh, yeah a tiny little spot for your outpost uh, without flat land around it's pretty this bad allows you to build resource extractors harbors and outposts on a... the world map shows our holdings ah <laughs> but yeah, this campaign's pretty nice. It eventually opens up with procedure. It's basically just a ton of procedural generated events. Pretty basic. And the metallurgical industry will be built up around it. Iron will allow our most advanced towers and buildings. This resource extractor is missing access to workers. 
converts it to iron, but it needs to be transported across the water. Um, and basically, yeah, you start off with not next to no commanders and other faction people, but each captain holds specific. But eventually, your map is just going to be filled up. As soon as you build two, a trade route will connect them. Captains will carry your resources over vast distances. Your map will just be filled up with the little indicators, ships like this, and a lot of those are little events, recruit, uh, recruitment opportunities. As well as suspicious locations. This trade route is now connected. The captain can transport their specific goods back and forth. All right. Select your outpost so we can start expanding it further. You cannot build here. There is no tower with access to wood nearby. Right. Connect from a tower within range to a wood mill. Uh, so yeah, out of free build mode. Those are some of the bad habits I picked up Select your there. Outpost so we can start expanding it further. <sighs> With all major resources now at our disposal. strong battlements that support your tower. Uh, I'm just standing up playing the uh, entire thing over again, but um, but yeah, uh, when I was first playing this, I think what I was wondering was how much of it is decorative. It's too deep here to build anything. And if there's defensive values versus just housing, um, then how much adds to the stats of the tower. So Every once in a while, you'll get these balconies, and it just generates relevant structures on top. And you'll get things like, oh, there's a balcony there with an AA gun emplacement and stuff, versus things like a house. So that might just contribute to an overall strength value or something. So I don't think you have to fish around for uh, trying to rebuild these things over and over until you get the gun emplacement. But it's just part of the satisfaction to watch it uh, populate these balconies, are built from balconies and yeah, platforms. The more expansive your tower, the more powerful your commanders will become if they are assigned here. This command tower is looking stout. We already have an experienced warboat commander among our retinue. Let's assign them. New forces are ready nearby. Fly up to their command tower. This tower and its commander now stand watch over our settlement. Their forces will deploy, joining our battle group when the surveyor is near the command tower. Our settlement. These are desperate okay, the click clicking on the words are a little better. There, so yeah, it just kind of opens up here. Okay, I haven't experimented with that. So yeah, that's essentially it. Uh, you build up these towers, and the beefier they are, the more units you'll get. So I, I think when I was in the free build, I got five or six eagles around me. And in this case, it's three because uh, I think it's yeah the distance and access to the workers or something. It's just like a me there's a mix of all of the resources you can see there, and I'm um, it might just be uh, the weakest link sort of situation, where because there's a deficiency in iron or something, maybe it, it's keeping it down. But uh, but yeah, you essentially just want to make these bastions of power as tall as possible and then you get that 
retinue. So now, yep, these three little eagles follow me around. To the political influence of your settlement. If one faction becomes yeah, your population. <laughs> uh, when I played it before, every time I opened up that menu, pretty much got that warning. So yep, and then you just keep playing this until you're hit. You hit that build limit. Yep, just hire them. It's pretty much not a downside in the demo, you have enrolled a and it's just that every once in a while to transport goods. you'll get other events where somebody has beef with one of your uh, hired commanders or captains, and you basically start a combat scenario off of that. So yep, you get a lot of these little events. They will procedurally generate uh, off of locations, even if you've already uh, scouted them, right? It's all abstract. So even if I'd scouted this before and this place did not exist here, if you play long enough and you move around, it'll spawn something. It could spawn something out of your sight. And oh, what's that? We somehow we managed to miss this little outpost, but it's just nice. And yeah, it's, you can't. Uh, in the cam in campaign mode, you can't just plop an outpost down. You need to gather one of these first before you can put another population center down. Then, let's see here, you just uh, left shift. Oh, oh, it's V now. You are now carrying a salvaged building. Select a spot on solid ground or in the shallows where you can rebuild it from your surveyor. So yeah, uh, it, then you just utilize the radius around your surveyor there uh, just head towards those blue question marks and you get more events just to, just to see what's out there but i'm kind of rushing this uh before i built up many more cities many more resources so i got more little pirates your surveyor can build a mine on this you have enrolled an officer they command a mighty warship to defend your trade routes. But I think I'll be okay with three. We'll see, just crash and burn. But yeah, and that's essentially it. You you just look at these the new buildings, or these new continents, to find out what's cool. Then, oh, okay, this is an actually good outpost the spot. Or, oh wait, these are also, like, unique. Metallurgical industry will be built. Your survey. Ah, commander. Okay. And there are, I th they're also like little unique buildings. They don't seem to have. Uh, they don't all seem to have unique effects, but some of them made it sound like they did. And you just, it's almost like those landmarks in SimCity games. You can just place them somewhere, and it adds flavor. With more orders. unique buildings. It's marked on the map. So I think that's just uh, it's just a forge that you can connect to your trade routes with a harbor. And yeah, you just keep doing this. I'll I guess I'll uh, I'll keep triggering these until I get a combat situation. If it happens sooner or later, you eventually start favoring a faction. It's just totally random who's allowed into your settlements, who you recruit, and eventually you get the influence thrown out of balance. So before I pretty much went all, ma I eventually kept finding Mansers and their leader uh, wanted to join up to oversee his people. You have enrolled a trade ship captain. They can be assigned to transport goods. And the Mansers get all the gun theming, so Marka. Ah, pirate refugees. I remember commenting on this that their theming of this, these cities with these tentacle octopus arms with all of the housing built on top of it. Pretty cool. So you have this another outpost that you can build up. Oh, right. I think by exploring those you get uh, extra members on, uh, added to your retinue so I haven't built a new commander or anything but yeah that pirate vessel joined up now the ship has entered our war. you have enrolled a trade ship captain they can be assigned to transport goods 
Yeah, I think you have to play for a while and accumulate those those factions before you get enough to piss somebody off. The commander, there are commanders that auto seem to have an icon for automatically triggering fiery hostilities with an opposing faction. Still, yeah, even without me going in depth here, it's just gorgeous. You just imagine the, the placing towers, logistics, cities all around, leading your army through the, the mists, the skies. I'm gonna, I'm gonna feel bad when they start dying. It's okay. So yeah, here's one. Yep, demolished to a salvage a unique building. So this is the first. It's kind of lighthouse. This salvaged building is unique. It will provide exclusive benefits to your settlement if you rebuild it. So yeah, it says unique benefits, um, but when you use or when you make it, it, you can't really see anything. Let me see. Droppable buildings. Okay. So I think I placed it somewhere up here. It's a pretty lighthouse. The free house, lighthouse, house, 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 house. Oops. There is no tower with access to wood nearby. Connect from a tower within range. Right, I have to build it from the city. Oh yep. <laughs> uh stairway all the way up there. And so if you go there, it's just here. Freehouse lighthouse, all the stats of your connected resources, but there doesn't seem to be any UI elements regarding what it does. Can't upgrade it. Uh, so I don't know. It might be something helping out your ships. They're right. There could be like a 10% bonus to your ship speed because it's a lighthouse. That's what they do. But it wasn't that visible to me. It's still cool to collect. And there are, I got a few of these unique buildings. And above all, it's style points. It looks pretty. Use these as cover for their war parties. Oh, okay. This might be where it begins. Oh, okay. Mancers, all right. Cool. Yep, see the theming there? Mancers. Get these dragon riders. Can't help but think of the uh, Two Steps from Hell tracks. Some gorgeous music. Uh, but I found that the, it seemed like the Manser flyers you have enrolled a I w stuck around with me the longest. To transport goods. Makes sense. A giant dragon as opposed to a couple of eagles. The eagles have the numbers, and then you have this, you know, one or two dragons following you around that tank their way through several fights. There might be some damage over time or recovery in between battles. You, it's not like you're managing a fleet uh, in those kinds of management games. I don't get to see. The only health I could see from my retinue was the, an eagle that was lit on fire after a fight, and it died after that. So, which is which is where I was trying to make my hypotheses on, like, oh, was that a damage over time effect? Because it kept following the surveyor blimp here and then it just died long after the fight by which I mean you know like 30 seconds and it wasn't a, it, it wasn't a projectile or something that just hadn't hit it or something yet unless that's just the longest death animation ever but uh, yeah in any case dragons having big HP pools meant that it survived fight after fight after fight Ship captain. They can be assigned to How many people do I let in for it? Pisses somebody off. Show me compass. Your surveyor can build a woodmill here. Build it <laughs> and attract craftspeople and industry. Yeah, I might, I might have to build up the city more just to get it notable enough to attract faction attention. Yeah. <laughs> um, did I? I think I just don't have stone here, so I ended up having to make a trade route. 
been spotted nearby. Some factions use these as cover for their war parties. We should investigate. But yeah, eventually they start attacking, and unfortunately there is a range limit to your towers. Oh, here's the, here it is. So yeah, now there's people who are targeting your captains. Don't want to lose them, so... Uh, I'd rather not lose a captain, so here we go. There we go, it just auto-targets your turrets. Oh gosh. They're really focus-firing me here. So you can die. I, I don't think it... There's not really resources or anything for you to track. But it's still a bit of a hassle to fly back to where you were. Uh, feel worse for the little minions following you. But yep, it just auto battles, you fire your broadsides. I think we did we win? Nobody die? Ship. You have enrolled an officer. They come All right. a mighty So yep, that's just an encounter done. So eventually those will start happening. Ships will start approaching and bombarding your outposts here. Uh, I think I had one where it uh, took me a few minutes to get over here, and in that time it destroyed a few of my mines. You can strafe a lot of things solo, um, decently. But yeah, you want it is crucial to have your towers near what you they want you want to defend. Which sounds obvious, but no, I mean like actually almost on top of it. Because there were times where if I built some, a tower like right here on this right side of the island, if an enemy approached from the left side far enough, it outranges it, um, I think. Uh, it, again, it depends on the height, for probably. But yeah, there, would be, there could be examples where it's firing on something and the tower is stationary, so uh, that's not going to do the job. So yeah, you want to make something close to your center, roughly. But otherwise, it makes makes sense. You have enrolled a trade ship captain. Um, but yeah, it's these storm clouds and storm clouds and ships. But you would basically just be yeah, expanding resource trade routes, new little settlements. The most you could do is uh, seeing the maw here, which is, uh, again, just what if Marianas Trench, but water seeping down into uh, a crevice in the earth. But that should be most of it. Uh, you just, yeah, there's, it is, a, it's a demo. So not like I'm going to complain about uh, the content or finished mechanics and stuff like that. But yeah, you just rescue outposts. Find a few. You could probably make a little game of connecting um, a bunch of unique, uh, unique buildings. You'd have to. You'd eventually start having start uh, having to deconstruct outposts and other cities because you're just going to hit that limit. But otherwise, yeah, it's it's gorgeous. It's very simple. You don't have to worry about uh, texturing a lot. I think. I th it might have been like a loading screen tooltip or something. Just like, but yeah, who really cares when the big picture, this overall feeling of what you're controlling um, is simple but pleasant to control and feel, uh, to look at. I keep saying feel, but I mean, yeah, that's, that's what it is when you're building and you're just watching something come to life. These towers. And just, uh, yeah, like, let me see here. Just build something across a channel. And you just let it, uh, just let yourself go wild. Like the, like the dev said, it's experimentation. Oh, there it is. So yeah, you get these, look at that. I mean, it does, it just, just feels great to s watch it generate. These suspension bridges. Um, you could probably, I mean, really, there's all those D&D uh, &D programs on Steam. You probably get a really decent blueprint uh, for trade routes and city castle placements uh, right out of this game as well. Um, yeah, it just, it just feels cool. 
Just keep going here. <laughs> See about. Can I? Uh. Oh no, no, that's just itself. Oh, I think it's because I. It's too close to the other tower. Yeah. But you can just. You, know, you have a good time finding these little pin pricks to put giant man towers on. But yeah, that's, that's essentially it. Look, you just step away and it, every angle is another screenshot. But anyhow, I'm not going to keep rambling. Uh, that's Bulwark, Falconeer Chronicles. I can't wait to see where this goes. This got wishlisted um, as soon as I was done. Because I'm just looking forward to it. Uh, like, obviously, this a lot of this depends on, like, oh, uh, alpha, beta coverage, early access, right? There's oh, I've only done that for a few games, and uh, obviously, there's people who've been burned by some AAA games. Indie games, not usually as big of a risk, but still, I, I shouldn't, on principle, uh, guarantee these sorts of things. But still, it is very promising, uh, and so it went on the wish list. There are others that I'm, uh, others, other games that I'll be showcasing here, but, uh, but yeah, this first, this one I wanted to do first. Uh, but yeah, thanks for spending time <laughs> in this little recorded video, very little interaction, and uh, yeah, it's it would still be easier if I were live streaming, if I could see chat off to the side by having this in a window. That'd be really nice. Um, but yeah, thank you.